Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and in this video I'm going to tell you my strategy for this season of 2024-2025 and I'll show you my team as it stands for game week one. However, due to what isn't and isn't happening in the transfer market, I may have to change my team, but I may not. So I've not decided that yet. So I'll start by telling you what my overall goal is for the season. So there's a website called FPL Game Week, which I'm not affiliated at all, and that's their URL. But I do talk about it every week, and on there you can see how you'd fare against some of the more popular content creators. And my goal this season is to finish within the top third of all content creators who play the game. And last season, who was third? Third, uh, third of the way down the list? It was Andy, and a lot of you will know of Andy. And he finished around 44k. So if I make my goal about 40k rank, then I should finish around the top third. And then that would be okay. So my strategy for the season, and from a high level, the players I choose really don't matter, is I'm going to try and get money. The first few weeks are all about trying to get value in my team. And after that, I can start playing the game. So game week one, I may bench boost. I don't know yet. Now, there's something about the bench boost is, in my mind, it is the worst chip. So it'd be good to get it out of the way. Game week two, I'm almost certainly going to wildcard. The only reason I wouldn't would be if my players did so well in game week one that they were all going up in value. But because I'm chasing value, it means Saturday night and Sunday night, I'm going to have to make transfers early. And so because I'm going to be making maybe 10 transfers or more, I'm almost certainly going to wildcard. Game week three... I'm going to take lots of hits. If I have to take make 10 transfers, take 10 hits, that's what I'm going to do because it's all about trying to get the money. We've then got international break. Then game week four, going to take many hits. Game week five, I'll take some hits. Game week six, I'll take some hits. So I think that's August and September. So by the end of September, I know my rank will be poor, but hopefully I'll have at least 2 million more team value than most other content creators. That's the plan. And then up to Christmas, which will be game week 19, the end of the year, I'm going to probably go very template. I just make myself disappear now. And then this is what, up to game week 29, I'm still going to go very template. And then the last nine weeks from game week 30 to 38, I'm going to play safe differentials and make up the last bit of difference. So my very ballpark estimation of what my rank is going to be at these various points is if there's about 10 million people playing, then if at the end of game week six, my rank's around 6.4 million, I'm absolutely on target. I'm happy enough with that. If by the end of the year, my rank is 1.6 million, then we're doing very, very well. Because I'm going to have more money than other people, I should gradually be able to chip away at their scores. And the game week nine, 29 was saying 800 rank. So the end of game week 38, rank 40k, within the top third of content creators. And my plan is to hit the newly promoted teams as hard as possible. So I've got Isaac, he's going to be my captain at home to Southampton. With Gordon, who's a bit of a risk because we can't be sure how many minutes he's going to play. And of course, the news about possibly going to Liverpool, which is probably not going to happen now, that was a bit of a distraction too. And I've got Pope in goal. Now I also put in here, Gahey. At time of recording, it looks like he's probably not going to go to Newcastle. But a few days ago, it was looking quite likely. And it's not definitely not going to happen. So if I can keep him where he is and not make any more transfers, I'm going to have four Newcastle players playing against Southampton if he plays. And then Liverpool are at home to Ips, or rather away to Ipswich. So I've got Trent, Jossa and Luis Diaz. But of course, there's now rumours that Luis Diaz may go to Man City or may go elsewhere so he may not even be a Liverpool player at the weekend so, so that might scupper my plans and then the other promoted side was Leicester so I've got Pedro Porro, Son and Johnson against Leicester but I made this team a few days ago so I've also got Solanke against Leicester so if Gahey goes to Newcastle before the weekend and Diaz stays at Liverpool I could have 11 players against the newly promoted sides but there's potential minute risks here with a few of these players because of all the shenanigans that's going on. But I do have a decent bench. On my bench, I have the Forest Keeper Cells, 
we don't know his first choice, but we're suspecting he is. And he's at home to Bournemouth. Bournemouth no longer have Solanke. He could get a clean sheet. Then I've got Havertz, White and Barco. Now, if my 11 players that I've showed you earlier are all looking likely to play, then I will be bench boosting this. If they're not, then I will play Havertz and White and I'll take off obviously Gahey and possibly Luis Diaz if he's not going to play, otherwise Johnson. So I don't know. Otherwise, I may make two or three transfers. But because I'm wildcard in game week two, it doesn't matter too much who I play in game week one. Now, obviously, Haaland is the obvious captain choice for game week two. But unless he's going up in value after game week one, I'm probably not going to buy him. So game week two might be quite a bad game week for me. But that's OK because I'm after the money. As for the background picture, that's Alan Shearer. <laughs> the reason I've got him there is today's August the 13th and that's his birthday. And I started playing fantasy football. It was the Telegraph I used to play. I used to have to send in stuff if you're doing it with them. Uh, when was it? 1995 I started playing. And Shearer retired in the early 2000s, I think it was. Now, a mistake I made back then, which I won't make this mistake again, is the last couple of seasons I avoided Shearer because I thought he's old, he gets injuries, it's not worth hanging, having him. And yet when he played, he kept scoring goals. And as you no doubt know, he's the Premiership's leading all-time goal scorer. So it's his birthday. Note to myself, old players that are still playing, they're still OK. So if Vardy's ever fit during the season, I may well get him because he's a very good player. So there we have it. That's my strategy for this season. Chase the money and then hopefully make up the points difference. It may or may not work. I guess we'll find out in 38 game weeks time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.